Last night, Iowa LSU women's college basketball owned the sports world. It was the event that everybody was talking about. And if you weren't involved, you probably felt left out. I don't know if last night ever happened when I was younger. I mean, it's obviously happened with different sports in more recent history, but I'm talking about growing up. I don't know that that's ever happened. And I think that that's incredible. Hold for applause. What the game last night had was what every other sports property wants for every single matchup. The reason why when you'd be watching the Sunday night or the Monday night game, usually probably more likely on Sunday night, is you would have the Manning picture against Brady. You'd have the graphics. You'd have the history. The production teams that week would know their talking points, the buildup, and the talking points throughout the entire game, things that they were going to talk about in the production meetings and how they relate that to the game and be like, hey, the story of tonight's game is Manning Brady. Not hard to figure out. And that way, we're getting more eyeballs, more curiosity, because people are like, oh, those two guys are going at it again. There's a great rivalry there. I'm interested. Okay? That's what every single sport, the reason why F1 had its pop is because then you understood the stories. And it would be you know, new and everything. And I know other sports have tried to emulate that kind of stuff, but they didn't have the newness factor that racing had. And I always think that that's like the most important thing of growing a sport is like you have to figure out a way to get people to care about the backstories so that they care about the outcome. Whether it's Clark pushing the boundaries of basketball in a way that we didn't think the women's game would ever get to because, look, we didn't think Steph would be able to do what he did in the beginning. I remember the beginning of him making these shots. I'm like, wait, he's just going to do this now? Like I was worried it might be a little bit of a fluke or LSU squad that is different, that is unapologetic, that they're trying to repeat as champions, the Reese-Clark rivalry part of this, okay? Iowa, Louisiana, two places that are technically in the same country that feel like they're completely different worlds. All this stuff is great stuff for the drama of a basketball game. And when you are invested in all of this backstory, again, you care about the outcome. And people last night cared about the outcome. Sports is a lot like TV and movies, right? Great characters. Hey, what did that guy go through? Manchester by the sea. You're like, what happened to this guy? Are you fucking kidding me? Well, how's this going to end? Right? Don Draper, Mad Men. You're like, what did he do? Oh, he's, his, that's not even his name. His name's Dick. Well, what's going to happen now? Because there's nothing worse than when you're watching a TV show or a movie and you're like, you know what? I don't care if this guy gets the girl or dies. I don't care. You have that epiphany and you realize this show sucks. That's not good. That's not what you would want in a show. So as I look at the commentary off of last night's game and trying to wonder what this rating is going to be, it inevitably always gets pivoted then back to, you know, comparing it to the men's game where there's like a real sense of pride of, hey, the men's tournament, you know, and then it kind of turns into like a different conversation. But I think some of it is fair. I don't love all of it, but I think some of it is fair in that there is this, that with the NIL in women's college basketball and the fact that the WNBA salaries are not that appealing, that there will always be more backstory in women's college basketball in comparison to men's. Because men's, if you're Caitlin Clark, you're done after your freshman year. I mean, I'd say sophomore year, but we know that's not true. You'd be done after your freshman year. So we could look at the Purdue struggles and then the reward of finally breaking through this year, which I think is great because Painter's a great coach. It's a well-coached team. It seems like it's a good group of guys. I don't know. You know, I'm just dipping my toes into it for a couple of weeks myself. But that's not really enough. That's nothing compared to Caitlin Clark and LSU and all the stuff that we've been talking about for well over a year. It's just not close. So when I start to think forward on all of this, I'm like, wait, is there any chance that the women's tournament will surpass the men's in popularity if this continues? Or is the Clark LSU story this, this peak point and then it just drops off again? You know, and the men's tournament being a more, I'd say, prevalent product. You know, I don't know how many of you filled out women's brackets to your office. Uh, probably not as many as the men's brackets, but like you understand my point. I think the win in all this is that I'm even wondering, like, maybe could the women's tournament become the better product? Better is probably not the right word, but 
Could it be the product that more people will care about 10, 20 years from now because there's less turnover? And I think that's the win in a way that I don't know that I ever would have even thought that that was something you could argue. So So having having said said all of that, that, I want to be honest with you. I changed changed the channel at halftime. It's It's not not for me. I get get frustrated. frustrated. The same way I get frustrated when I watch the men's game where I watch certain games and I'm like, where are the shot creators? Like, where are the guys going to get their own? Is it going to be just dribble, 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 run through a bunch of sets that get all clogged up and then some guy's left hand a terrible shot at the end? Or is the underdog team going to try to run out the clock with like three minutes left up two? Like, what are you guys doing? Or having the guy go at six or seven seconds left, dribbling the ball down from 25 seconds left because they're up one and instead of getting a decent shot, they make sure they have no time left on an awful attempt at the end of so many tournament games. It drives me crazy. So, yeah, there were some things with the game last night that I was like, yeah, all right. I'm going to watch Scoot Henderson try to get Jalen Suggs without a screen (laughs) to hit the game winner at Orlando to complete Portland's comeback. That didn't work out. Or Devin Booker going nuts again in New Orleans where he now has 49 points combined in the first quarters of the last two games at New Orleans. So, look, I'm not going to lie to you about what it meant to me, but it shouldn't matter to you what it meant to me. The historic part of it is the most important part. I think there's three levels of progress here. There is phase one. And I can only relate this to my own experience, my own age, and how I experience the consumption of women's sports. Phase one is being in college and one guy out of like 10 of us, we were like, hey, we're going to go outside and just do stuff that guys do at 18, 19 years old. Are you coming? And he was like, no, I'm going to watch UConn, Tennessee, women's in my dorm room on CBS, the only channel that would work. And we were like, are you serious, dude? He was ridiculed. He was like, what? It's fun. Might have been a bit of a regional thing because we're all from New England. But he was into it. But he was also mocked for being into it. That doesn't happen anymore. And that's good. The first phase then pivoted, I think, into the second phase of the U.S. women's national team being dominant, having all sorts of characters. Uh, I think there's also a national pride sense of it where it was like, no, you're supposed to be into this and you're supposed to watch and you're supposed to be supportive. Like, I, honestly, I just find like, I never understand the, the person that's like, no, nah, I, I actually root for, root for Greece. Like, okay, cool. I think the final phase of progress will be a man's choice to just go, yeah, I think it's great. You like it. but. I'm not going to watch the whole game because there was other stuff I wanted to watch the same way that I didn't watch any baseball or hockey this weekend, or I barely watched any NC state Duke because I was doing a Sunday NBA pod where when I was watching NC state Duke, I was like, yeah, I I think I'm good. I'm going to watch rockets Mavericks. And I think that's okay. And you should think it's okay too. Okay.